Hey everybody, welcome back to Life in Room 27. My name is Miss Robinson and I'm back with another math tutorial video for you guys. Today we're going to be looking at lesson 6.1 and in lesson 6.1 you're going to be using fraction tiles to model how you can add two fractions with unlike denominators. So if you're looking at this for your homework tonight, you should have your fraction tiles with you and you need to make sure that your parents understand that using the fraction tiles will be the only way that you can solve the problems for tonight's math homework. So in this video, I'm going to show you what you would need to do with those fraction tiles in order to come up with the sum of two fractions without physically adding them together. And then what you wanna remember when you start doing this is that you're always gonna start with your one whole fraction piece because that is what you're comparing everything else to when you're making up or when you're adding your two fractions together. So I'm going to set the camera up and what you'll notice is that when you're watching me do it, I'm in a different location because I needed help. So Mrs. Chu is the camera woman for me in this video while I'm manipulating the fraction tiles so that I can show you guys how to do it. So I'm going to show you a couple of examples and then I'm going to give you some closing thoughts after you look at those. So I will see you in a couple of seconds. Okay. In this problem, we're gonna add one half plus one fourth. So the first thing that you're gonna do when you're adding your fractions and you're using models is you're always gonna start with the one whole bar because we wanna remember that fractions represent parts of a whole. So we have one half to represent this part of your problem there. And then we have one fourth to represent that part of your problem there. Now, I believe that you learned in fourth grade that you cannot add fractions with unlike denominators. So we cannot just look at these two and come up with the sum just based on what we see here. So in order to find the sum of one half plus one fourth, you're gonna start guessing and checking with all your other fraction pieces to see which ones fit perfectly underneath the two fractional parts that you've set underneath your one whole bar. So I'm gonna start and I'm just gonna guess. So I'm gonna take my one sixth pieces and I'm gonna line them up all the way until I get to the very end of the one fourth piece. So I have put one sixth pieces underneath there, but I know that this does not fit perfectly. And that's another very important part. You need to make sure at all times that these are lined up exactly or they're lined up perfectly. So even though this looks relatively close, it doesn't fit perfectly. If I remove that one, I don't have enough, so I know that it can't be the one sixth pieces, so I'm gonna move on to a different fractional part. I might try something a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna try my one eighth pieces. So the same thing, I'm gonna line them up right underneath both the one half and the one fourth. Okay, so when I line up my 1 8 pieces and I make sure that everything's perfectly straight, this fits exactly underneath the 1 half plus the 1 fourth. So this is the piece that I'm going to go with. So once I've figured out what is the fractional piece that goes underneath both my add-ins, I need to count how many of those pieces did I put underneath. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that means 1 half plus 1 fourth, 1 fourth would be 6 eighths. So the answer to this problem would be 6 eighths. Then I'll try to see if I can find another set. So I'm gonna try some bigger pieces. I'll try the fourths. So I'm gonna put 1 fourth here, 1 fourth there, and another fourth there. That also works. So if I wanted to say, okay, well the sum would be one, two, three, it would be three fourths. Okay. Both of these answers would be acceptable at this point. Eventually we'll get to the point where we talk, start talking about simplifying fractions and you'll learn that six eighths and three fourths represent the same value. They're just expressed in different ways. So this is gonna be your first example. The next example that I show is going to show you when you have a sum that ends up being greater than one or longer than your one whole bar. The problem that we have is going to be three fifths plus one half. And just to show you step by step what you would do, like I said in the previous example, the first thing you wanna do is put your one whole bar there because that's always your reference point. Then you're gonna model three fifths. So I'm looking for my fifth pieces, which are these green ones here. And if it's three fifths, I'm gonna put down three of these one fifth pieces. So that's one fifth, this is two fifths, and then this is three fifths. So that's me modeling three fifths. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna model or put down one half. So I'm gonna look for my half pieces. 
which is this here, and it's just one half, so I'm gonna stick that there. Now notice that when I model these two things, when these are sitting next to each other, it's longer than the one whole bar. So that tells me that my answer is going to be one and something. It's gonna be larger than one. But the same steps apply as in the previous example. Now I'm gonna look for another set of fraction pieces that will fit completely underneath both my one-fifth pieces and my one-half piece, pieces. So I'm just gonna guess. So I'm gonna start with, um, let's try the eighths. So I'm gonna put those here. And those are all the eighths that I have. So I know it can't be eighths because I've run out of them. Plus there's this extra space here, so that's not gonna be enough. Remember, you're trying to match the second row, not the first row. But notice that eight eighths is the same thing as you saying one whole, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But I know in this problem, the eighths won't work. So the eighths didn't work. Now I'm gonna try, um, let's try the tenths. So I'll try my tenths. Same thing, you're gonna line them up, trying to be careful to keep everything straight. And while I'm doing this, the fact of the matter is, is you will not have enough of any of these pieces in terms of your fraction tiles. Because the way these packs are set up is you only have a, enough of each fraction tile to make a whole. So when you have problems like this for homework and your answer ends up being greater than one, that's when you're gonna have to start visualizing the piece that you could fit in there. And we'll kind of take a look at that right now. So right now, those are all the tenths that I have avail available to me. And notice these 10 tenths equal one whole, but there's still this little space here. Now, since you will only have one pack of fraction tiles with you at home, one suggestion I would have is you could very carefully move one of the fraction tiles from the end, remembering that it really is there, that it's still there. And you might wanna even draw or write on your paper that there was a 10th piece there and just test to see if you can fit it in that empty spot. And in this case, I can. So that tells me that the sum of three fifths plus one half is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven tenths. Or the more appropriate way to write the answer would be one whole because ten tenths is the same thing as one whole. So your answer would be one and one tenth. So it would be a mixed number, one and one tenth. Uh, for me, if you express it as 11 tenths, I'll go ahead and accept that now because you at least understand the concept of what you're doing. But eventually we will start talking about why we don't want to leave our fractions as improper, meaning that your numerator is greater than your denominator. So that is how you would handle it if you have an answer where you model it, or if you have a problem and when you model it, you can tell that your answer is going to be greater than one. You're gonna have to start visualizing empty spots, maybe make a little note for yourself if you remove a tile so that you can see if you can add it on to the end. So, All right, so those were your examples on how to add two fractions together with unlike denominators using fraction tiles. Like I said in the intro, just make sure that when you start, you always start by using your one whole fraction bar because that is what you're using as a comparison piece. And then once you put the two add-ins down using the fraction tiles, then you're just really gonna be searching for the different fractional pieces that have the same denominators that will fit exactly underneath the two add-ins that you have modeled. Please make sure that when you're using the fraction tiles that you're being very careful that everything is straight because the fraction parts that you choose to find your sum have to fit exactly underneath there. Even if it looks like it almost fits, it has to fit exactly. So as always, I hope those examples were helpful for you guys. If you found this video helpful and you're a student or a parent, please be sure to give the video a thumbs up so that I know to continue to make these for you guys. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.